morning everyone it is so good to be together i was thinking this morning about what a gift it is to just spend a few minutes talking about turning our hearts to something that actually matters in a very cluttered world of things shouting for our attention how few of those things are actually about flourishing in our life and showing up for a check-in on our inner world so that we can show up for the rest of the world with the kind of joy and peace that we can find as we're following Jesus together. So um, if that helps you this morning, it helps me to say, okay, I'm going to slow down before I even start this day and actually focus on one thing that really truly matters eternally, not just matters for the next few weeks as I prepare for Christmas, not matters for the next even few months or few years as I do my work, but something that matters eternally, which is the way that my inner world, my soul shows up in the world today, wherever God has called you, whatever people he's called you to, whatever place he's called you to. So we are in a series on the seven habits of Jesus that lead us into peace and joy. And we're looking at Matthew 5, 6, and 7 as an example of that. If you missed any, just hop back. The last two days are going to get you right to where we are today because we're going to take a sharp right turn into something different here in Matthew chapter 5. We've talked about this idea of having heart integrity, checking in with ourselves, knowing that what's inside is the same as what comes outside. Um, We've talked about word integrity, being people who do what we say we're going to do, who use our words um, honestly and with integrity. And now we're going to turn to a different kind of moment here where Jesus starts to talk about how we show up in the world with love. So our third habit is love. And I know that is a very overused word. So I want to talk about love, particularly in the context of those that we don't want to love, which is why we're taking a sharp right turn, because I talked about boundaries yesterday and making distance from those people. So a caveat before we begin, I am not talking about relationships that are actually abusive. I'm not talking about people who are physically or emotionally abusive with their words or their actions that are in your life. That's a completely different conversation. God is not calling us to that. That is not part of what it means to be a Christian is to be abused when we have a when we have power in a situation that we can get out of. I'm talking about your run of the mill stuff, just like your difficult people that are in your life, the people that have hurt you in the past, the people who are harming you just like sort of emotionally because of who they are and their own brokenness. That kind of stuff is what we're talking about today. So in verse 38, we're in five, Matthew five, Jesus says, you've heard it say eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, but I tell you, don't resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. He goes on and he says, you've heard it say love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. So we've got a couple of actions here. First of all, let's just recognize that Jesus himself models this particular passage of scripture fully in his life. So this is early on in his ministry, but what we're going to see as Jesus's life continues, that as he is obedient to his heavenly father and takes his ministry through miracles, all the way through his unjust trial, his arrest, his beating, his time on the cross, his death on the cross, and his resurrection, all through that, we're going to see the way that he engages with people who do not understand who he is, who are bound up in their own motivations and sin and actually crucify him. We're going to see through that how he treats people like that and how he shows up. And what I want you guys to know is that love is a decision that is made. As opposed to yesterday when we talked about the idea that our boundaries are being violated and what happens when we let people violate our boundaries. This is the way that we say, no, I'm going to proactively make my boundaries be a certain way that I'm going to show up even for the unlovable in my own power, in my own strength, in a certain way. So what Jesus says here is that when someone slaps you on the cheek, make the decision to turn the other cheek. Now, this isn't like a literal slap, but the idea is when you get stung by something, by a criticism, by whatever, whatever shows up in your unlovable person that day, Jesus is saying, make the decision 
to love them more. <laughs> like make the decision in your heart because we all have a reaction to when we're hurt. We have a reaction to when really evil comes our way and we're going to snap back out of that reaction. And Jesus is saying the love of Jesus is a decision that we make about how we show up. So love is a decision. Love is humble. So humble says, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to think of my, at how I engage with this person, no matter how they show up. I recently had a wise friend say to me, in every conversation, in every interaction, you are either building up or tearing down a person. The way that you engage with that person, you're either showing up to build them up or you're showing up to tear them down in some way. We do this in all kinds of subtle ways. We do this with our ego, the way that we kind of like posture ourselves above a person. We do this with like critique and criticism that maybe isn't helpful but makes us feel better or gives us sort of subtle nod to like, hey, I'm better than you. We do this all the time. So love is humble when we show up to build up people who do not build us up. Now, remember, there's still the, the same thing as boundaries. We're just talking about unlovable people who are in your life right now. Love is humble. Love is a decision. And love actually desires blessing for those who are hurting us. And that's how you know you've actually forgiven someone who's hurt you. When you go to, as Jesus says, we're going to pray for our enemies, pray for those who persecute you. When you go to your Heavenly Father with prayer, what's happening is all the power that's in here of your of that hurt, first of all, is forgiven. And we're able to let that person go and let them off the hook. But also, we know that we've actually forgiven people when we experience compassion for them. We can pray and ask God, would you give me eyes to see this person for who they really are? I think of when Jesus was on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's an example of having eyes to see people for who they really are. That in the midst of Jesus's greatest suffering, when not only did he take the physical burden of pain of death upon himself, but he also took the, the spiritual burden of all of our sin, all that weight upon himself. And he still looked out sort of at the world and said, forgive them for they know not what they do. There was a sense of understanding that the way that Jesus was being heard at that time was out of the brokenness and sin of the world. When we are able to see people in our life who have hurt us, who continue to hurt us, who don't understand us, whatever, when we see them with the eyes of Jesus, we're actually able to connect their brokenness to why they are being unlovable to us. And when we do that, we are able to have compassion. We can actually pray for them for why they're doing what they do and ask God to heal and bless them. When you're able to do that, you have been set free. You are no longer confined by that relationship. You're not defined by that relationship. You're not carrying the hurt of that relationship into your future. You are leaving it in the past. You are leaving it in God's hands and it doesn't bind you anymore. So that's the that's where the joy and peace comes from. Remember, we're talking about how do we live a life of flourishing, of joy and peace. When we show up for this passage, at first glance, it's like, how is this going to lead me to peace and joy? How am I going to have peace and joy when I just keep on showing up for unlovable people? But the reality is that we enter into a process with God where he is able to set us free from those hurts, set us free from what binds us up when we are defined by how other people have treated us. He's saying, you don't, you're not defined by that anymore. You actually have the strength, the patience, the compassion to show up for unlovable people. And when they hurt you, you're able to make the decision to keep loving them. You don't have to make a react reactive decision. You're able to say, in my strength, I can handle who you are. I can keep showing up with patience, love, and compassion. I'm not defined by what you're trying to define me as. Does that make sense? So love is humble. Love is a decision. We know that we are loving when we are able to forgive someone and wish we sort of are able to pray for their blessing. We're not praying for them to get like hit by a car. <laughs> like that's literally the, you know, the difference is like pray when, you know, have you ever prayed the angry prayer for someone when you're like, you're angry at the person in your prayer. You're like, Lord, I just hope that you really show up for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, this is saying, Lord, would you set them free from their brokenness that has come into my world? So what can you do today? Is it easy? This one's already applications right in front of us. Someone unlovable will come into your life. Someone irritating will bother you, even if it's the stranger who is driving six miles under the speed limit right in front of you today. Someone's going to bother you. When that someone is bothering you, I want you to remember that love is a decision. Love is a decision. And I want you to actually enter into your mind and ask the Spirit of God to help you 
be more loving and compassionate and see what happens in your inner world when you are engaged with God in that conversation about wanting to show up as a person who builds people up, does not tear them down. All right, everyone, go into that piece today and I'll see you tomorrow.